Hello from Ireland. Today we're stepping ashore in the vibrant port of Cobe. Kolb was the final port of call of the Titanic before heading to America. It's a place of captivating history, stunning landscape, and enchanting culture. We're two retirees hooked on travel. Follow us on our journeys around the world. The picturesque colorful homes that are lined up in a row is the first thing you see when arriving to the port. With an explorer spirit, we do things differently. We usually pass the standard cruise ship tours and create our own adventures. We like to mix with the locals and experience the way they live and the way they travel. Something that the big bus tours, well, they just don't provide. Kolb is the easiest port for independent travel, and the train station well, is just on the other side of the fence. The train runs every 30 minutes to Cork, and by the time they load up those buses, we'll probably already be in Cork. If you happen to take the excursion from the cruise ship, it's 97 pounds per person. We uh, just departed the train. It was about a 25 minute train ride. If you don't take the train and you elect to take the bus, it's $59, $59 uh, per person to be dropped off at Cork City. And on the train, it was, it was seven euros round trip per person. And we're going to Blarney. So it's about a two block walk to the bus station. And then we're gonna take a bus over to Blarney. So it really is like two block walk to the bus station from the train station. And also, if you do this on your own, it's literally very little cost. In most parts of Europe, the public transport is fast, reliable, and convenient. Here, most of the cities and towns, they're very compact, and this is how everyone travels. So uh, what you do is you go to traffic lights, then you turn left, and cross the bridge to get to the bus station. Many, many people were continued straight. They didn't know where they were going. So they're going up that to that bridge, I guess. What you do is you come across the bridge and then you walk down here. You get under this building called the Savoy and that's the bus stop that you take and you take bus 215 and that will take you right to Blarney's Castle and the Blarney Village. On the way back, you get stopped off here on this side of the street, and you're gonna just cross over and make your way back over to the train station. That's probably a 15 minute walk to the, to the train station. So we got to the bus station and it was 20 minute wait, so we decided to just take a taxi. And he said he's gonna take us to Blarney Castle for 15 euros, which for approximately 15 euros. So that's what we're doing at the moment. Cork, if you don't decide to just stay in the city, it looks like there's kind of a nice little town to explore. Great shopping. Well, it looks like we beat the buses and the crowds. This is the entrance to Blarney Castle and they have some gorgeous flower baskets. And there's the entrance. So we made it to Barlarney's Castle and it was 14 euros per person. That was for people that are 60 and over. And that's for the castle and the grounds. Now there's something with this rock. You're, you can get good luck if you kiss the rock, I guess, Blarney's rock. The Blarney Castle is seven centuries old, and in my humble opinion, it's not much of a castle. It was owned by many different people through history, 
and now is just a major tourist attraction promoting legend of the Blarney Stone. Kennels, Sentry, and Dungeon. It's the gatehouse of a substantial bastion tower that once defended the tower house that we know as Blarney Castle. To your right, the dog kennel and sentry guarded entrance. As you can see, the castle is mostly a roofless tower, and people can go up and walk along the top. We're here early, and I sure hope we don't have to wait long. Well, we got here, and it's probably at least a 45 minute wait. So we decided not to climb the stairs at the top. We don't have that kind of time to waste. And a lot of times these castles are more interesting than from the outside than they are from the inside. So. Another good place to be. This is the wall that protects the castle. The grounds here are enormous. Look at this, some of these beautiful trees. You could have added the Blarney House to your ticket if you wanted to go through it, but we elected not to. Gosh, it looks like a castle in and of itself. Holy cow. The house has been in the same family for centuries and it's passed down through generations. A stunning landscape and you can spend the day just hiking around. The house is still lived in. Looks like a cute little cafe in here. Stable yard. They probably kept their horses in here. Oh yeah, this used to be where they kept the horses. Well, how cute is that? I think they're really spoiled. <laughs> look at they still it still has the look of a barn. He laughed, good shot. <laughs> they have a nice collection of original original carriages here. Amazing. Okay, we finished the castle and now we're in the Blarney Village. It's actually quite small, but it's cute. Oh. Nice butcher. So this is the Blarney Woolen Mills. The Blarney Woolen Mills is huge, beautiful selection of different kinds of sweaters and whatnot, men's and women's. And I went ahead and did buy a sweater. It's nice quality, lamb's wool and cotton blend. You have to stop in here if you're here for, for sure. So doing this independently, we, we took the train and the bus. The, 
the train was the train was seven, the bus was four, and the entrance to the castle was was fourteen. So that was six. One ninety euros per liter, which is extremely expensive. It's probably like about seven dollars a gallon. The fuel is very expensive here. Anyway, it's, it's a really nice double-decker city bus. We're taking it back to the train station. It leaves, it leaves the bus station every 30 minutes. And the train leaves every 30 minutes. Beautiful countryside with lots of farmland. One thing that's really neat about taking a city bus is you take side streets so you get to see neighborhoods. If you're on the tour, they go directly on the highway straight to your destination. This is interesting. It's, uh, it's basically kind of a, a private tour of on its own, really. I thought it was a brewery. Wow, it's a Heineken. For a good souvenir to take home from Ireland, it's a beautiful Aran sweater with traditional Irish patterns. I got mine at the largest gift store in Ireland, the Blarney Woolen Mills, where you can find thousands of choices. Tide is way out. I have big tides here. St. Patrick's Bridge. We're walking back to the train station and we're ahead of schedule with plenty of time to explore the picturesque town of Cobe. I do think our time will be better spent in Cobe than here in Cork. Well, we had a couple of hours still left before we needed to board the ship, so when we got back to Cove, we decided to walk into the little town. It's really colorful and cute. It's all on the waterfront. Nice park. Beautiful flowers. And then when you come in on the ship, you see these colorful buildings. Oh, they have palm trees. <laughs> There's a ferry, too, that you can take across. This park is really nice. All the country flags. Now that's what you would expect to see in Ireland. Irish music, a beautiful church, flowers everywhere. Pubs. Really cute town. You don't have to do a tour if you don't want to. You can just get off the ship and spend your day here at this cute little town. <laughs> the telephone. They're shamrock. <laughs> cute. Like a lot of old towns should do this, revive their town put in some nice cute shops. There, we seem to be finding a lot of Turkish and Kur Kurdish barbers. Um, I think they must be famous for their, their haircuts, something. <laughs> okay, if you're curious about the real estate here in Cove, Ireland, 
you're going to get a house for 375,000 euros and it's 112 square meters. Extremely small. This one here on the water is 1 million euros. It's a huge property. I, I don't know how many square meters it doesn't say. Hmm. Actually, it's not bad. Like, uh, now, these cute little homes that we saw coming in, uh, 225,000. What were you looking at, Zarko? Oh, 270,000. 95 square meters or little. Yeah. <laughs> you might want that one. Yeah. Yeah. This is 1.4 million euros. Huge compound. Oh, it's only 3,300 square feet. It looks big, but it's not. It's 3,300 3, square feet. This is small, mm. and it's 1.4 million euros. This is a, a pub, Irish pub. Typical, typical Irish pub. It's cute. After a few wonderful hours and two pints of Guinness in Cobe, it's time to depart. If you found any useful information, give us a thumbs up.